Uh, we are reviewing The Crow, and I gotta tell you, this is the movie I've been wanting to cover on Beacon Rewind for a while, but I just I never felt I could do it justice. And when I saw you, your announcement to doing The Crow and what you had put out there and how you felt about that movie growing up, and then agreeing to come on the show, this was like the perfect timing, the stars aligned, and I was ready to cover it. But so, it. no, this is a movie, I, I, this was a film I remember my older brother taking me to, and I did not want to see it at the time, but he was babysitting me. So really? I was like, well, I'll go because my yeah. brother says I have to go. And I walked out of that theater like a changed person. You saw it in theaters? I, yes. Oh. I I was blown away in the theater watching it. And then I was also one of those that when it got to the dollar theater, I had a dollar theater around my house and it was there for oh, a week. I watched it seven times in a row. I'm I went so there jealous. every single night and paid a dollar and watched this movie in Did the theater. Did you watch it during the original run? In yes. The yes. It was it was amazing. I'm that oh. old. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you just sh hey, you just revealed your age. But no, man, yeah. more credit to you for no. seeing that in theaters. It was it was a, it wow. was quite an experience, and I, I just you know at the at the time, I mean, I was young. I didn't you know I, the previews. All I just thought was like, oh, it's this rock music movie. Like I didn't really know the trailers. My brother was really big into the grunge music at the time. You know, my older cool big brother. Yeah. You know, I was like, I'll, I'll go. You know, I have to, and just blown away by. Um, and it was the things that, like, I just, you know, at the time, it was like the visuals on it were just amazing. Um, you know, the the there's just so many cool scenes that I think you can just watch that film. And it's one of those where when I'm watching a movie, I always just sit there and say, that's a cool shot. That's, that's a cool, cool shot. shot. And yes. it's funny because I hear my daughter doing it now. But that's a movie where I think you say it like well over a dozen times watching. Um, and I didn't even really know the whole backstory. Like I had known Brandon Lee had died filming a movie. But I, at that age, I was so young, I didn't piece it together that, oh, this family. is the movie that he died. And you know, I got so obsessed with it that then I started digging into it. But mm -hmm. just the, the, the way the movie is filmed, even today, I, I, I strongly believe that the movie holds up today in all visual effects Easily. aspects. Some of the scenes that you look and you can see the lines, you can see that it's, it's in front of a screen. That, but I, it's, it looks well, like it fits the, the scene, like the church scene when the crow flies up. Like you could tell it's not one shot, but it looks so cool. I love that it looks that way. It's shot brilliantly and directed brilliantly by Alex Proyas. And yes. I, I'm a huge Alex Proyas fan. I think he's a fantastic filmmaker. I wish he's done, I wish he would have done more films. They're honestly. so far from, it was Dark City and then iRobot and yeah. yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know why. They're all good movies. They're, they're great movies, I think. And they all have a very strong visual aesthetic. And I think like a lot of that started with The Crow. And in my honest opinion, it may be controversial. It may be not. But like, I think The Crow was pretty much, besides Batman, besides Tim Burton's Batmans, I think he, I, I think that film was what kind of ushered in comic book movies to be the way they are especially dc movies yes um, at the time i think it was even criticized though for looking it was like batman because of how dark it was because but of how dark it was i don't i don't see them i don't see it as a mimic like i feel like there's a tim burton style which is naturally dark black and white it's whimsy it's whimsical yes like there's a it's dark but like there's a i mean you look at a nightmare you know before christmas like there's that kind of like that whimsical fantasy vibe to it right the crow is more like we're putting you can i swear on the show yeah we they're putting it. you in shit and you're not getting out of this shit like it, it's dark yeah it's it's scary grimy. It, it's grimy it's 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 gross yeah like, it takes place in detroit it's a detroit film <laughs> i don't think it was filmed in detroit was it was it? not filmed in yeah, detroit yeah. and it's it, yes it, it does say it takes place it, it says like a like uh like almost like a different universe Detroit. Like they do yeah. admit that it wasn't meant to be this Detroit. There's but... no icon iconography from Detroit that no. you're really gonna notice in this film. No, it's only actually like in a news segment. If you look closely yeah. in the background, one of the TVs that they're watching it says Detroit Devil's Night, yeah. uh, and that's really the only true, you know, only connection that you see Detroit throughout the movie. Well, the little known fact about it is that James O'Barr, the creator of The Crow, is actually from Detroit. Like he, oh, okay. he lived in Detroit. That's why it's based out of Detroit. Oh, I did not. Yeah. I'm learning still. This at is why. One, I... At one point, he lived in in Detroit, okay. and that's where the whole idea and the whole theme came from. So, if you don't know, obviously, The Crow was a comic book series, uh, a comic book story first uh, by James O'Barr. Graphic novel. Graphic comic, novel. Yeah, yes. Comic book. Uh, and then they had the adaptation to 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 make the movie, which it's not technically an adaptation. Um, you know, the, the story does change from the book to the movie. And for those that don't know, if we're really telling green people that don't know anything about The Crow, which I think there's, a, unfortunately, a whole generation out there that don't understand it. We just talked about this. Yes. It, it's, 
It's unfortunately come to that time period. It's 25th anniversary this year, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, there's a whole generation of kids who don't know no. this film. No, uh, this is the movie that Brandon Lee uh, died filming. And uh, it's actually, for those that have seen, if you didn't know, Fun Boy is actually the one who kills Brandon Lee. Uh, there was a piece of metal stuck in the barrel of the revolver that he shoots. And when they put the blanks in, there's enough pressure to, to pierce in Brandon Lee's back, rush to the hospital, and, and uh, did not, you know, did not live. Um, so there's like a legacy, like a legacy story I, yeah, with this film that I think just needs to stay with Brandon Lee, yeah. which, you know, they keep looking at remakes, they keep falling apart, thankfully. Um, but the, the movie, I, I feel like, you know, obviously that, that it changed a lot of what they could tell with the story because, you know, when you watch the movie, the first like half hour of it isn't Brandon Lee. I mean, that, that's a lot of the, the, the body double mm -hmm. that they put his face over. They had to finish a lot of this movie without him. Um, I, I believe it's like mostly like the first 30 minutes, the whole T-Bird scene with the car, I found out later was not. Bobby, yeah, Bobby. yeah, I was really frustrated with that because I thought that was him. <laughs> I'm interested in the hand, the whole through the hand scene. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. With Fun Boy? That, there's something that she's, I'm not calling this like, there's some shots in here obviously that because of Brandon's death they had to completely find a way to work with. But like there's this one particular shot where Brandon, you know, gets his hand shot and you can see right through it they don't green screen it very well and it, yeah. the, 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 um, the, the hand model wasn't very convincing oh yeah okay you, you know what I'm talking yeah. about right? yep. yeah so like you can just see it kind of like this you can tell it's green screen you can tell it's green it. screen yeah. it's not super well done but I almost wonder if they took that shot of him laughing from a different scene because it just doesn't seem like it I thought it kind of fit with the way him and fun boy were conversing I never thought that scene was it um but it's very possible. That's the trick thing with this movie. It did such a good job at blending those scenes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when he when he first puts the makeup on right before he does, and he punches the mirror. That's a scene from a different take. That like I remember watching the making, how they like shattered the the, the image to make it match the cracks in the mirror. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like that wasn't he wasn't technically sitting in front of the mirror. It's, it's amazing when you dive into this film, the amount of work that it took to take place, and then when you top that off with such a great film outcome. You know, after all the, the the adversities that it faced, this movie's amazing. I mean, the, the crow story—it's basically the crow can bring you back from the dead. You know, if you've suffered like such a horrendous death, and you know, uh, Eric Draven, Brandon Lee's character, him and his fiance at the time are murdered because they're fighting like their apartment uh, for like the the you know the caretaking of they, it. Yeah, and... they complained to the landlord, and the landlord um, was basically involved in this gang. I forget the name of the gang, but. Um, they basically took, you know, they did not like the complaints too much. And on Devil's Night, they come up into the apartment, rape Shelly, yeah. and kill Eric and throw him out a window. About a year later, they bring... The Eric, crow brings him back. The crow brings Eric back from the dead to avenge the loss of himself and of Shelly. And that's kind of where this film yes and i think that you know comic book movies i think where this dif you know differentiates itself from comic book films there's such a human emotion involved again this is a movie you just said 25 years old every time i watch that movie it gets more and it's going to sound silly but it gets more emotional for it me does. watching the scenes when they're getting raped and he's it's, getting it's beat and he's got to sit there yes because once you get once i get older and i watch it it's like the attachment it's more emotional like it's it a is. it's a disturbing scene of what happens to these two uh and he suffers with those memories while he's back to avenge his death and you know he there was a girl that they took care of that you know he kind of reconnects but understands he shouldn't reconnect with her he can't really make friends but it's shot so well in the the dialogue in the film i to me, like the crow has the best threat line in all of movies oh, yeah. when he's talking to the police officer and he's like, they're all dead. <laughs> they're all dead. They just don't know it yet. Like that just sends and, chills every time he says it. the delivery of it was so good though. He's, <laughs> you know, like oh, in superhero movies now, they'd be like, they're all dead. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. Brandon in his infinite geniusness basically says, they're all dead. They just don't know it yet. With like a little smirk. With a smirk and yes. a smile and it's like, <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Perfect. Yeah. You didn't try to be a badass. You wanted to. You wanted to crack. You wanted to play with it a little. Bit. Yeah. You wanted like, to play with that line. It's such a different, like you said, different superhero type type character. Is, where, yeah. uh, and and 
just the conversation between him and the officer when he goes into his apartment. He's like, you still, still have your hat on. And, you know, it's just, there's certain lines. I mean, Brandon Lee's, you know, his acting, obviously, he just had, like, rapid fire before this. Uh, he had the other one with, like, Dolph Liner. really wasn't at, like, a high level, but this is one of those films that it's so sad the accident happened because I feel like that man's career after this movie would have just skyrocketed because it was so well done, his acting in this film, the his look in the film he you know they purposely didn't make it a karate movie like he was actually nervous when they were choreographing the 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 fight scene with like t-bird that he didn't want it to be karate he didn't want it to look like he knew how to fight he wanted to just come off as like winning a fight naturally you know naturally and and it's choreographed that way and uh, you know, There's very really... little martial arts in it. Maybe a little bit, but like not much at no. all. No, because I remember reading or watching the interviews where he purposely tried to steer away from it. And he didn't want to. it to be in that because he made, he made the fight scenes serve the the story as opposed to the story serving the fight scenes. Right, and I think that's what makes those scenes stick so much better is because there's a real element to it. It feels like this guy isn't a world traveled martial artist so he shouldn't right. fight why all of a sudden because you're back from the dead you know kung fu like yeah, every right. vampire in buffy no. yeah right <laughs> exactly my point so like the fact that they had the fight scenes you know and they had him fight like somebody who doesn't have experience like i think that's what made the fight scenes yeah. out to me more and they made him more real and i think you become more you become more attached to the character because you can he relate doesn't, he doesn't seem invincible right he makes mistakes he gets hurt like there's parts towards the end where like stuff happens and he's starting to get hit and hurt and you think he's gonna die yeah like th he's not invincible not right. really well so, at the like, end yeah uh it, it's it, i love the scenes when he finds out you know he's invincible like at the very beginning when he runs to the ledge of the building and just the way he you know he just looks down and he just topples over and fall free falls from this like rooftop building all the way to the ground and when he hits just starts laughing because then he's realizing he's invincible at that yeah. point um so he can get his revenge and the soundtrack to this movie the 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 score to the movie this is probably the first uh Ooh, cd score yeah. that i actually purchased because mine too this <laughs> score was amazing to it the soundtrack you know had nine inch nails don't tell a pilot it fit the movie so well everything in this movie is just done like it's perfect I, I the way that everything lined up you know the, the bands that's playing in the the movie they fit the scene for when it's needed i i loved every bit of this film and you know the vision it, this is literally my like halloween tradition after candy's yeah. handed out it's lights go off and you pop in the crow and watch it every single year at that time and i it doesn't it, i don't think it aged poorly i think if you've not seen the crow that is definitely something that you guys, you know, it's on the Netflix constantly. It is, You yeah, can yeah. stream and watch. I mean, I've got three different versions, I think. <laughs> I just watched it, I just watched it at like uh, about a week or two ago. Yeah. I just, just a week or two ago and it still hold. it still hits me just as hard as it did when I first watched it when I was like 10. Yeah. Like it, it, it it's, and I did watch it before. I should have been able to watch it. I don't, we're not recommending for 10 year olds. No. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. But, uh. But no, it still hits me just as hard, and like it still it still holds up. Like the, the, the cinematography, the look of the film, the running the across the, the rooftops right? is so cool. Like it's... it still holds up. Yeah, there's some dated effects in it. It's 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 not gonna be a CGI fest like a lot of the films are nowadays. But just if you watch it for what it is, if you watch it for the story, and you watch it for the acting, and just just the the most important stuff of, of this film. You'll love this film, I think, yes. personally. I've never met anybody who hated The Crow. No. The, no. the sequels, that may be a different story. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Which we dived on already. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that eventually. But uh, but The Crow itself, like I, it always hits people. It always, It's that type of film where you watch it and you're like, wow. Yeah, and, and watch it again because I think each yeah. time you watch it, you're, you'll pick up something you find else. Something and new. I think even not necessarily you know knowing that he did die making the film i think even adds to the emotion because as you're watching it you're you're watching this actor bloom and then it's heartbreaking to know that this is this his is breakout where he role went. yes this this was his breakout role and if he would have survived this film it, it's it makes you wonder what he would have done after yeah like you could i could very easily see him being like neo in the matrix yeah very oh, yeah. easily but no I, I, so i i always wondered you know is it like, does that add to the emotion or, or, or B, um, would the movie have been different 
had he lived? Like, would it, because they did have to change a lot of the beginning to, to, to shoot it in a certain way to not show his face, to, to keep it dark. And I love a lot of those shots. So, you know, I, I've always kind of wondered in the back of my head, like, would the movie have been the same had he lived? Would they have filmed it differently? Would it have changed some of the story? Because I think they had to also adjust the story yeah. um, due to the accident happening yeah. uh, to fit with what they could work with. Well, think of it like this. Um, would Jaws be the same if the, if the shark actually worked? Oh, good point. So, you, in, in times like that where you do have like technical issues and whatnot, where something tr unfortunately tragic happens during production, you just have to find a way to work around it. Yes. And that's where you can get creative and play around with the shots and right. see what you can do with them. Um, unfortunately, they had a tragic event that they had to do that with, but I think that added a lot to the creativity and the shot right. composition of the film itself. Because like one of my favorite scenes is right when right after he gets dressed and puts the makeup on, and he's like walking to the window, and the way that person's walking, I love. It's from it's behind, and you know, would that have been there? You know, certain scenes right. like when he's standing in the window, they they put his face on another person's body. Like, would they have thought of that at the time when the lightning flashes right. and you know? It being so dark and just being the lightning flashing makes the scene so cool. Would they have done that if he was just standing? Yeah. You know, they would have been, oh, we can just film it like he's there. And so I've always kind of wondered that. Uh, obviously, you you know, would like a different outcome for him and would like him around. But well, you're kind of curious of the outcome of the film. Would it have changed had that not happened? Well, I think another situation, and you can look at the situation with Heath, Heath Ledger and The Dark Knight. Because it was a very similar situation right. i think they completed the entirety of filming yes before heath ledger died yeah it and was they, uh, they, had they couldn't do reshoots, reshoots or for yeah. some of the audio they um, couldn't they needed done that it adds to the infamy of the film absolutely um i think does it does it blow the legacy of the character and of the acting up maybe a little bit but i don't think I don't think people's opinions of Heath Ledger's performance in The Dark Knight would have changed had he survived. No. That right. he, that was a brilliant take on the character. It was a different direction for, for the Joker. Um, it was something that completely made people rethink. I mean, it. you can... I If you ask me, I think it was a... Um, it completely changed the way DC does their films. Yes. And Marvel oh, yes. even. Like, that was a genre-changing performance by Heath Ledger. And had he survived, it still would have been the same. Right. No, I, I agree with that. Um, I think The Crow is very similar. Like, yeah. I think Brandon Lee, he still would have gotten great acclaim oh, yes. for this film. He, yes, I, think he would have been on, I think he would have gone on to bigger projects. Yeah, I mean, the, the interactions, like you say, his acting, the, the way he just played the nonchalant hero of, you know, I, I just want him, just and he's sitting on the table, and it, it's just he's, he's, like, laid back as this avenging his death. He's not angry. Yeah. He's not just acting erratic. He's... He's cool, calm, collected. He's but not playing doing the... superhero poses. No, he's just and, like, confident. To act he's just cool and all that. Yeah. Like one of my favorite scenes and one of my favorite lines of dialogue in that film is when he's interacting with um, Ernie Hudson. Uh -huh. Ernie Hudson's character. They're you know talking back and forth in the apartment, and he's like, Ernie's like, "You're not gonna do that, you know." That disappearing yeah. shit bullshit. <laughs> yeah. right? He's like, "No, I think I'm just gonna I take your door." Thought I'd like, use your front door. <laughs> Vanish into thin air again? I thought I'd use your front door. I thought yeah. I'd use your front door. Like, you <laughs> so, know, and that's a scene, too. I love that scene. Every time I watch it, more emotional. It the way so he's good. taught, the, their dialogue and them back and forth. Yes, because he's... that's So Ernie Hudson is a police officer that was there the night of their death. And he kind of cared for the little girl that was left behind that they were caring for. So Brandon Lee goes to him to kind of seek answers. Like, you were there. What happened? And yeah. again, as I get older and watch that scene and, and Brandon, you know, he's telling Brandon Lee what happens and you see him just sink. It's so... That's my favorite scene of the film. Yeah. Bar none. Like, all the, even with all the action, even with all the cool shots, that scene between Ernie Hudson and Brandon Lee was my favorite yes. scene in the film. What are you, Period. ghost? Boo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's so good. There's so many good things about this film. Um, you know, I, it, and again, after you watch the movie, I would highly recommend do some behind the scenes digging because I think you, you will get a greater appreciation for the work done on the film. Oh. And there's also some real interesting ties to like the Brandon, you know, to the Lee curse that, you know, like obviously Bruce Lee was killed on, oh, yeah. on set and then Brandon Lee, you know, so many years later. And then you dig into that where there was even something about like a mirror that was on the Lee house that fell that day of Brandon Lee filming. And that's when he died. Like the mirror was supposed to keep the curse away. 
and the day he died, like it was actually Ed falling you over. You heard the rumor it was like the Chinese mafia that killed Brandon Lee, right? Uh, they came back to get Brandon Lee. Like there is, there's so there's many a lot, rumors yeah. that, that <laughs> went around about that, and I, I think it's a very interesting thing. But to 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 what you said, like the behind the scenes featurettes um, that were on, I think were they on the video release? I know there's on, on the DVD. DVD. Yes, they are on the DVD release, especially if you have the Blu-ray. Oh, they're so interesting and they're so tragic. Yeah. Oh my god. And some interesting like, deleted scenes, even. Uh, you know, they had like the the Skull Cowboy that we were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. They actually filmed some scenes with him that didn't make it. And the Skull Cowboy was a character in the book, which I think the film was better to not have. But I didn't think it needed the character. No. I'd read no, it. But there are some good behind the scenes, and it has Brandon Lee's last uh, interview. As, as on all, they've been on it from the beginning. They've always put that interview on there of him talking, and he he goes on to the speech of you know you take every day for what it is. Because we do not know when we will die, we get to think of life as an inexhaustible well, and yet everything happens only a certain number of times, and a very small number, really. How many more times will you remember? a certain afternoon of your childhood, an afternoon that is so deeply a part of your being that you can't even conceive of your life without it, perhaps four or five times more, perhaps not even that. How many more times will you watch the full moon rise? Perhaps 20, and yet it all seems limitless. And it's like, this is your final, like, it, did you know this was gonna happen? That cause... interview breaks your heart, because you can <laughs> yeah. see like, you can see him become a star. Yeah. Like not only in the film, but in like that behind the scenes featurette. Like he just talks. Yeah. Like he's so excited about the film, so passionate. Yeah. And then just to hear hear that, and then just know what happened. It's it's uh heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. Like Robert crow. over here, I am a huge crow fan. <laughs> I have been a huge crow fan for as long as I can remember. It is my second favorite film next oh. to Jurassic. I uh, hold on a second. <laughs> next to Jurassic Park, oh, okay. they're a different time. It's my first favorite film. After the age of ten, okay, but before the age of ten, Jurassic Park. So yeah, I, it holds that spot. They go neck and I neck. I can understand. They yes. go neck. Believe me, the love that I have for the crow though is immense. I've, I'm a huge fan of the franchise, even Wicked Prayer. Really? Even yeah, the Edward I, Furlong. I do like Wicked Prayer. Ooh. Yeah. But How about like, the TV show? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like Mark Dacascos. Like love Mark. He's great in uh, John Wick Three. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> but like. Ooh, TV show. Ooh. Yeah, you know, it just didn't find the right. It was the wrong identity. I think a Crow series now would be amazing, but the try back then, I think it was like on the WB network on Saturday mornings. Sci-fi. What? Well, it was sci-fi. Was it sci-fi? It was sci-fi. Oh wow. See, so, yeah, but it was just it was during the syndication type era of like Hercules and Xena, and it was trying to catch that younger audience, yeah. and so it couldn't really be dark. All the scenes took place in daylight, which, if you know the Crow. Should be at night. Which uh, is weird because it just, it, I mean, okay, if you want to have a couple of day scenes, right. cool. But, like, you're making the whole show in the daylight. Yeah, that was a rough series. And then on top of that, it was basically like they were remaking the original Crow film, which... Right, it was an I, Eric Draven spin yeah. That's sacrilege. Yes. I'm sorry, but yes. if you want to Leave do a sequel, on. that's one thing. If you want to do maybe, like, a, a, a reboot uh, based off of the original comic, that's a whole other thing. But to completely remake the original yes. film and then turn into a TV show, I thought to me was sacrilege. I'm glad I, the, I the remakes have been cursed ever since. I, you know, I, 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 again, I'm with you. If you're going to make a Crow movie, just pick an original character and either tell an original story because you can do whatever you want. The Crow can revive whoever's been, you know, brutally murdered and, and can, wants to seek yeah. revenge. You can tell any story you want. Leave yeah. Eric Draven alone. Like that's Brandon Lee's legacy. It's an yeah. it's an anthology anthological series. Yeah. So like, why not just keep going in that direction? I'm yeah. a huge Crow fan. It's always been my favorite since was it '95? I think when it came out. Or 96, 94. 94, and it's been my favorite film ever since. And uh, you know, it, it's one of those where I just want to see justice given because the sequels, I'm not such a fan of. The, the only one that came close was the the Kirsten Dunst. It was the third one that they released. That ended Salvation. Up going, so yeah. Thank you yeah, for that being one a Salvation wasn't so bad. fan. I, I like I the idea when good. he peeled his face that it was the scars as the makeup. Unique. Like it's yes, so that was a good take. Uh, that was supposed to go to theater. I remember during production, they were really taking that production serious. It was supposed to be a theatrical release, and then I don't know, something fell apart, and it uh, ended up just going straight to video. And you know, I used to work at Blockbuster, and I took it home and watched it, and it was good. Yeah. But you could tell something had uh, fallen off in the production, which was unfortunate. And a, a funny story is when I was uh, living out in LA, um, a friend of mine was uh, on Spider-Man, 
And I told her, I said, if you get in front of Kirsten Dunst, ask her where the Crow movie is because it hadn't been released yet. Yeah, and I knew it had been made years prior. So she did. She sat down with her and was like, so what's going on with the Crow? And at the time, Kirsten Dunst didn't even know. She's like, I have no idea where that movie is at. Isn't it weird? Because I think her, literally her very next film after that was Spider-Man. Yeah, yep. Like she blew up yeah. immediately after that. Like I almost wish they would have held off on Salvation. Yeah. Just until the announcement that she was in Spider-Man came out. And then out, done and then, a release. Then, Which usually release they do. A lot of those movies you'll see when someone makes it that like an older movie gets a theatrical release just to it try and really piggyback. And, yeah, it was they, really odd. And Salvation's like a good... It's like... I, I don't want to call it perfect because there were issues yeah. with it. But it was a really good sequel. <laughs> yes, it, it was. It was better than City of Angels. It was definitely better than City of Angels. I, I was and that went theatrical. City, yes. I was not a fan of that one. I wasn't a fan. <laughs> I, I was... Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll say it right here. I was a fan of the the visual of it the visual aesthetic of city of angels i thought was gorgeous certain part like the golden look you mean like the, the... golden look um the cinco de mayo like, yeah theme like I, I love the look of it i love the look of it vincent what's his last perez name? vincent perez is actually not a bad crow He's no he had the look i liked that how they made it longer like the lines i thought was like oh, little things cool. in his haircut was perfect Very um, cool. the look was on point i just to me, and we're kind of already picking into the next segment where we could discuss <laughs> this. Uh, to me, I the crow was dark and was weird just by def- not weird, but was just had that dark edge by default. Yeah. To whereas I felt City of Angels tried to make it weird, if that made sense. Like for it, some of the shots and some I of the scenes, where you you were trying to catch that weirdness instead of or darkness, twisty um, edge instead of just letting it happen the way the first one did. You're right. It, 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 it seemed like, forced. It, it, it seems like it wasn't natural right you know what i mean like especially and this is nothing against like the the main villain of that film it just seemed the whole thing seemed yes. forced. i didn't buy him no. as somebody who was evil and then they're taking it into this i mean it's a supernatural franchise it is yes but it's somewhat grounded in reality to me yes. it's it was blade before blade was blade yes like in yes. my opinion like, no i agree 100 percent. yep the sure. blade totally was a uh, yes but then like City of Angels just went in this really weird direction towards the end of making I forget his name like the the main villain like yeah, this just big supernatural sinister, sinister yeah sinister entity calling upon the gods to make him invincible I was like what just happened why <laughs> and the whole look with the motorcycle was cool I liked that was there there was touches Loved where it's like it. man they were they were close but unfortunately but no it's uh but definitely you know it's Halloween time uh, give the crow a watch I highly recommend Justin. Highly, 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 highly recommend. recommend. I, I think it is required viewing. Yes, you have to watch it. And leave comments below. Let us know if you've watched it, what your thoughts were, if we got anything wrong, or if you disagree, or if you agree. I'd love to hear from you guys on your opinions on the movie. And Justin, I guess it, thank you for coming on Attack on Show, man. It's been thank a pleasure you having me. you. This was a lot of fun. Finally got to dive into the crow. So right? this is like I don't usually get to have these dialogues <laughs> with people about the crow. Because no, and... like it's very rare when you meet somebody who's seen the film and is a huge fan of it, like yeah. like you and I are. So yeah, oh, you get them like they, like you said, they, they, it's not that like they don't like it, but I've had people just say, no, it's good. It was but that good. was it. Like they, you know, it's, nobody, no, ever, it's... Nobody, nobody ever says it's bad. Right. But like you have like people who say it's good and then you have your freaks like yeah. us. Like we were just pro <laughs> and freaks. And we're out there. And we're out there. We exist. <laughs> kind of like pro wrestling fans. Pro yes. wrestling fans will talk that they're pro wrestling fans, but there, there's a lot. Yeah, there are a lot out there. There's a lot. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe below. Uh, leave comments. Check out the uh, links below for the films coming out for Justin. And then what date was the date again for the Christmas coupon uh, December, Imagine Theater? December 2nd. December 2nd, Imagine Theater in Novi. So go meet Justin there. Check out Christmas Coupon. It's a great film. As always, I'm Robbie. Everybody, this is Attack on Show. Uh-huh.